Hi, my name is Nat Kale with the Washington State Department of Ecology. This is the second of four videos showing you how to use your electronic annual report for municipal stormwater. In the first one, I showed you how to log in, uh, get to the form, as well as add new users. In this one, we're actually going to be going through and answering the questions uh, and explaining how some of those answers work. If you don't know how to get to this form, you'll want to go back and watch the first video. So this is where we'll start. This is where we left off last time. This is the categories page. What you'll see here is, are some categories, some of which are going to be familiar to you from your permit sections and some of which aren't. So these general obligations are sort of a catch-all, but things like mapping, runoff controls, uh, IDD and E, or illicit discharge detection and elimination, these should all be familiar to you. In order to start filling out your annual report, simply click on one of the categories. We'll start with general obligations. That'll take you to a page like this. You're going to see three columns in this page. On the left, you have question number. That's the same number that shows up in the appendix in the back of your permit. So for continuing Western Washington Phase 2 permittees, that would be Appendix 3. For Phase 1 permittees, that's Appendix 12, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This also shows the permit section. So this particular question, S9.D.6, um, uh, is a section of the permit that has to do with any annexations, incorporations, or jurisdictional boundary changes. This can be valuable if you have any questions about the question itself. If you're not sure how it's phrased, you should go back to that permit section. And then finally is the question. This is the question as it shows up in the appendix, and uh, it should give you a, a good understanding of what it is you're supposed to submit. Now you're going to see there are a couple of different ways for you to answer questions. Question one asks for an attachment. If you get something like this, you simply click the Browse button, and it'll bring up a window like this. You can go to your desktop or wherever you have the file that you want to upload. In this case, I'm going to say I want this Excel file. And then you can click on Open. And what you'll see is it fills in here. So see users, etc. desktop. If you scroll to the right, we'll see that indeed it has 2015 bike log on there. There's another question here that also has a file upload. Question three is a little bit different. It's pretty straightforward, yes or no. You simply have to check one of the two of these. It'll switch back and forth between them as you check different ones. At the bottom, you'll have the buttons that uh, control how the form operates. We'll start with this back to categories. You see it's got a little uh, save icon next to it. It's because when we click back to categories, not only will it take us back to the screen we were just at, it'll also save all of the answers that we just submitted. So if we click on General Obligations again, you'll see under the first question, it now shows Saved Document Name, and it includes this bike log. You will notice that there are a bunch of additional uh, numbers added to this file name. Those are added for a reason, so you'll see that there's an underscore and then a one. That's because this first upload has to do with question number one. And then you'll see it says 02-20-2015. That's February 20th, 2015. That's when the document was uploaded. So that way you can keep track of when your answers were submitted and also for what question they were submitted. That'll make sense in our next video when we talk about attachments. So coming back down here to the controls again, we tried back to categories last time. Another thing we can do is hit save and next. So I'll make another change here, and click yes on this and no on this, and then hit save and next. That'll take me to the next category. See it says mapping, and then it asks me a question. I'll just answer that one yes, and then click save and previous. So you can see what that does. You can see that the answers I added, yes and no, are still there. So it saves when you hit Save and Next. And this is still there as well. So it saves when you hit Save and Previous as well. 
This Save button also saves your answers, but it takes you further back. Instead of the Categories page, it takes you all the way to the Submittals page. So we'll click on Edit to get back to where we were before. And this time I'll try Public Outreach, because we haven't been there before. Now uh, we'll show you a little bit about how the Not Applicable checkbox works. So let's say you say, yes, I did do this. And then you decide, well, I don't really know if I did or not. Or actually, it doesn't apply to me this time around. So you check not applicable. You'll notice that yes still appears. This isn't a problem. Uh, what will happen is we'll go down to the bottom of the page. We'll click Save in Previous, and then Save in Next again. And you'll see what happens is the yes goes away, and the not applicable stays there. So not applicable overrides anything you may have put in yes or no. Same thing if there's a browse button and not applicable. If you check not applicable, it'll override your file upload. So if I uncheck not applicable and click no on this and do the same thing, click save in previous and then save in next, you'll see that no appears and not applicable is unchecked. Every once in a while, you'll run across a question like this that requires you to type something in. Some of these questions have validation on them, so they'll only accept something that, uh, that works. So this is a website address, so if I hit Save in Previous, and Save in Next, you'll see that it saved it. If I type in something that is not appropriate for a website address, and then I try and save in previous, you'll see it gives me a little error. So it doesn't let me try and save the page, it highlights the issue, and it makes me go back and fix it. It also gives me a little heads up at the top of the page in red. Data for the highlighted fields is not saved. So now I know this hasn't been saved, so I can go back and fix that. Hit Save in Previous. And now it didn't give me an error. And when I hit Save in Next, what I typed in shows up. And that's all there is to it. If you decide that you make a change, say I click No and then Not Applicable here, and I think, nope. I didn't want to do that. Those are the wrong answers. You can always hit the cancel button. That won't save any of the changes that you've made since the last time you saved it. It'll give you a, a chance to decide not to click cancel. I'm sure that I do want to, so I hit OK. Brings me back to this page. I'll click on edit. I'll go back to public outreach. And when I scroll down, no and not applicable are not checked. That's it for how to fill in the electronic annual report. The next video will talk to you a little bit about attachments, how to deal with attachments that you've uploaded through a specific question, and also how to upload additional attachments. You can always find uh, this video and additional information if you go to www.ecy.wa.gov and search for Municipal Stormwater Annual Report. Thank you very much for listening.